Hello everyone. So in this video we're going to see how to calculate the surface area of a solid of revolution. So let's get started. Suppose that I have a curve y equals to f of x and I look at the curve between two points x equals to a and x equals to b. Now let me consider the case where I'm rotating this curve about the x-axis. So what, I'm gonna, what am I going to get? So I'll end up with some sort of solid of revolution here, something like this. Right? So that would be my solid of revolution. Now suppose I'm not interested in calculating the volume of the solid, but rather the surface area of the solid. So the area of the surface all around the solid. How can I do that? Well, the idea is the same as always, so somehow I want to slice the problem into manageable slices, calculate the area of each of these slices, and then sum them up to get the total surface area of the solid. So in this case, what I'll do is look first a little, at a little small segment of the curve, which has length ds, where ds is the line element that we introduced last week when we studied arc length of curves. And then I'm going to rotate that about the axis, what am I going to get? So I'll get something like this. Going around. So I get a little ring here. And these are going to be my slices here. So the idea is to first calculate the area of a typical ring, which is what I call DSA, SA for surface area. And then I'll add these up to get the total surface area of the solid. All right, so what is the area of a typical slice here, or a typical ring? Well, the ring, really, you could just cut it, and you would end up with a rectangle. The width of the rectangle would be ds, the length of the line segment, and the height of the rectangle would be the whole circumference here of my ring. So that would be 2 pi r, where r here is the radius of the ring, which is really the distance between the curve and the axis of rotation. All right, so if I know that, then I know that the uh, surface area or the area of this ring is just going to be the product of the width, well, of the height first, times the width, and that gives me the surface area of my typical ring. And then, of course, to get the total surface area of the solid, what do I do? I just sum up all rings, which means I'm integrating. So what I'll get is that the surface area is, is equal to the integral, of dsa, which is really the integral of 2 pi r ds. Now, there's two different ways you could do that. So ds here is the line element we saw before. So you could write first, if you want to integrate in the x direction, you could write ds, remember, as 1 plus dy dx squared times ds, dx. And in which case, if you write that, then what you would get is that the surface area would be equal to the integral of 2 pi r times this expression times the x. But you could also do everything in terms of the y variable. It could happen that your function is given as x as a function of y. In this case, you would use the other expression for the line element that we've seen. And then the surface area would become same thing here, but with the expression as functions of y. Now the difference here is important to notice is that in this case the radius here should be written as a function of x while in the second case the radius should be written as a function of y. And of course the limits of integration which I'm not writing here, here should be in x and here should be in y. Alright, so let me do an example just to clarify how this works. Suppose I'm asking you to determine the surface area of the solid of revolution obtained by rotating the arc of the parabola y equals x squared from 0 to 1 around the y-axis. Okay, so the parabola looks like this. Now I'm only looking at the parabola between 0 and 1. So my point 1 was here, so something like that. And I want to rotate around the y-axis. So what kind of solid am I going to get? I would get something like this. Let me not put it in. Let me just put it like this. Right, so that's the solid I would get. And then I want to calculate the surface area here of my solid. 
Okay, so I could do it in fact in two ways here. I could use uh, everything in terms of x coordinate or everything in terms of y coordinates. So I'll do it in terms of x coordinate in this video, and in class we'll do it the other way, and we'll see how we get the same answer. So if we want to do everything in terms of x coordinate, so I'm writing my, this is my little line segment here, which I take to be ds, then I'm going to rotate here to get my little rings, which will look like something like this. Right, so the typical ring will have area given by 2 pi r ds. And if I want to write everything in terms of x, I'm going to write this as square root of 1 plus dy over dx squared times dx. So I need to calculate dy dx and also the radius as functions of x. Okay, so dy dx is easy to calculate. y is equal to x squared, so dy dx is equal to 2x. Now what about the radius? So the radius is the distance between my little line segment here and the axis of rotation. The axis of rotation is at x equals to 0, so the distance here is really just given by x, the position of my line segment. Okay, so then dsa is given by 2 pi x square root of 1 plus 4x square dx. Then the total surface area will be given by integrating. I mean, I'm working in x variable, so I'm going to integrate between x equals to 0 to x equals to 1. So I'm integrating over the arc length uh, of the curve that I'm rotating around, not the full solid, right? just the thing I'm rotating around. So I'm integrating from 0 to 1 of dsa, which is the integral from 0 to 1 of 2 pi x square root of 1 plus 4x squared dx. How am I going to do that? This is a relatively simple integral. I can do a simple substitution to solve it. I'm going to set u is equal to 1 plus 4x squared. du is equal to 8x dx. I also need to change the limits of integration. So if x is equal to 0, u is equal to 1. And if x is equal to 1, then u is equal to 5. All right? So I get that this is equal to the integral between 1 and 5 of 2 pi, now x dx becomes 1 over 8 du, and I get square root of u du. So this is equal to the integral between 1 and 5 of pi over 4 square root of u du, which I can integrate, I get pi over 4 u over, the, it's more than 3 half over 3 half, between 1 and 5, which will give me my answer. So I just bring that here. I get pi over 6 times 5 to the 3 half, which is 5 times square root of 5, minus 1 to the 3 half, which is 1. And this is the final answer for the surface area of this solid. Okay, so as I said, you could have done the exact same calculation here but in terms of the y, writing everything in terms of y variable, it's a good exercise to do it. I encourage you to try it. We're going to do it in class. And we're going to do more examples in class. For example, we're going to prove that the area, the surface area of a sphere really is equal to 4 pi r squared, which is a pretty cool calculation.